Paul, I would like to, to thank the Omics organization for giving me the opportunity to, to be here, uh, presenting some results from obtained from a European project called SATIN, acronym from Satiety Innovation, which has been developed uh, in a lot of partners around Europe, but uh, I'm from the University of Murcia. I'm going to speak a little bit about our role in this project. And <coughs> Uh, this talk uh, is going to, to be classified or divided in several parts. At the beginning, I'm going to, to show you uh, an introduction about the um, obesity around the world, which is, is an, an important uh, disease or epidemic that we have. Uh, after that, uh, I'm going to show you a brief summary of in which consists uh, the, our project and also the methodology, uh, the, the main uh, point of the, this talk is to show you the metho methodology we have developed in, in, the in, in the first phase of this project. Well, as you know, uh, obesity is a global problem uh, and, uh, and as you uh, in, in World Health uh, Organization uh, showed some, some data from prevalence of overweight and obese people around the world. Uh, as you know, body mass index is the, the most uh, parameter used for, to classify it. And after resolving this formula, weight measured in kilograms and length in m meters, uh, you obtain a score and it's classified between uh, 18 and 25 is a normal weight. Uh, above 25 is considered uh, overweight and more than 30 obese, okay? So uh, at the beginning of this century, according to World Health Organization, only states and Australia has a high prevalence of uh, overweight and obese people. However, uh, uh, eight years later, around 2010, this uh, uh, prevalence is uh, increasing around the world in a lot of countries in Europe, even in the north of Africa next to Mediterranean Sea. So uh, it's a disease, an epidemic, it's a controversial uh, definition, but uh, in, from my point of view, as you can see, uh, uh, obesity is an epidemic uh, spreading ar around the world. And this is not only for beauty or, or aspect or whatever. It's uh, very important in a health issue because it's very related with cardiovascular diseases, cancer, and diabetes, like I'm going to show you in next slide. Okay, uh, obesity is considered like a low-grade inflammation, which, uh, as I said before, is a controversial if uh, it's a disease or not, but it's clearly related that uh, apart from obesity, uh, obesity leads to another secondary diseases, like uh, uh, some of them related with uh, glucose metabolism, uh, including insulin resistance, uh, glucose intolerance, high fasting glucose levels, hyperinsulinemia, leading to uh, suffer uh, type 2 diabetes, which is not uh, insulin dependent diabetes. Uh, an important data is that 90% uh, uh, of uh, people who suffer type 2 diabetes has a body max index ab uh, above 25. I, I mean, it's overweight or obese, so it's not a coincidence, okay? Another uh, side uh, uh, diseases related with obesity are uh, those from related with lipid uh, metabolism, increasing the triglycerides and blood uh, cholesterol levels. And it can uh, be uh, cause endothelial dysfunction or atherosclerosis or even also hypertension. Uh, Another data is that uh, 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 obese and overweight and obese people has uh, five-fold uh, risk uh, than normal weight people to suffer uh, hypertension. Even 85% uh, 80, of hi hypertense people are overweight or obese. So again, this is not a coincidence. Uh, obesity is very well related with uh, type 2 diabetes and hypertension. 
but there is no also this direct, uh, directly related diseases. Also, we have another uh, secondary effect, like respiratory effect, there's uh, uh, sleep apnea, uh, orthoarthritis, uh, which, uh, or bones and knees and so on, uh, needs to, to support uh, more weight than he can, so it's, um, it's a, a problem. Also, cancer, uh, as uh, some speaker, Magda, this morning has uh, speak about breast cancer. Uh, it has been related that ob ob obese women uh, has a uh, higher percentage uh, of risk to suffer this kind of cancer. Also, coronary and artery diseases and stroke. Uh, another uh, uh, shocking uh, data is that uh, 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 Men and women below f uh, 50 years old uh, suffer uh, five times uh, more risk than normal white people to suffer uh, cardiovascular disease or stroke. And also, uh, reproductive, fun reproductive function, uh, obesity is very well related with uh, impotency or infertility in men and women. And there is an uh, even longer list that I'm not going to explain all of, all of these diseases. Okay, at that point, uh, we know that there is an epidemic, or from my point of view, but uh, can, what contributes to overweight and, ob and obesity? There is a, unfortunately, there is an uh, easy and fast answer, because there are a lot of variety of factors that play a role in, in obesity. First one is behavior. Today we have a sedentary lifestyle, or we have a sedentary jobs in front of a computer or whatever. But when we go out, we also uh, uh, select lift or escalator versus the traditional stairs. Okay, this is related with the energy balance. Uh, it should be that intake and energy intake and expenditure should be uh, approximately the same, but. If we intake more energy than we expend, we gain weight. Okay. Uh, about the environment, nowadays we have a, a obeso obesogenic environment because we the accessibility and availability of uh, certain certain products, like uh, you can see in the picture, these high fat, high refined sugars products are. Um, very accessible around the world. They are cheap, <coughs> tasty, savory, and even there is a lot of advertisement in, in, in papers and TV, so all people tend to, to eat them. Also, uh, genetic factors play its, its role, as you can see in these mice. Uh, eating the same, one of them is obese and the other is normal weight, so uh, genetic factors is also another important uh, factor to take into account, and also uh, every person is uh, uh, different to other, and, and also culture and socioeconomic status is also well related with obesity. It's uh, said that the poor people has a higher incidence in obesity and overweight. Okay, taking into account this uh, prevalence of overweight and, and obese around the world, uh, uh, appears the, this European funded project called SATIN, this Satiety Innovation, which is based on uh, a concept described by Phil Layson and Blundell and updated in, in 2012, which is the Satiety Cascade. In that point, it's important to, to define two concepts, which are satiation and satiety. First one, uh, defines the process that uh, brings uh, an eating phase to an end. Meanwhile, satiety is the, 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 the group of processes that, <coughs> sorry, the group of processes that uh, inhibit the further eating, okay? Broadly speaking, satiety controls the meal size and satiety the, 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 the period between uh, intake period, intake period. So uh, in this project, we, we try to uh, accelerate satiation and uh, enhance satiety. 
uh, including some ingredients in, in foods, uh, helping people to stop eating and control their energy intake and, and their weight. Here you can see a, a flow chart of the, this project, and it's divided in, in, in two phases, a, a screening of phase one and in vitro screening, where we have uh, uh, studied a lot of uh, natural extract, fibers, and so on. And uh, the best candidates, or the best uh, the, 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 the ingredients that have shown the best result according to satiety profile uh, are selected for a uh, human trials or intervention in, in, long, in long studies in humans. And uh, nowadays we are in this work package five in the intervention of this project. But uh, this talk is going to be focused in the uh, work package one in where an in of platform has been developed to analyze in a, in a fast, uh, accuracy, accurate and cost effective uh, time the, the satiety uh, effect of different ingredients. Basically, it consists in simulate a gastrointestinal digestion, a human gas gastrointestinal digestion, and one of the partner uh, uh, mm, uh, has this uh, a shine, which is a, a simulator of human intestine microbial ecology, and, and after running this uh, simulation, different uh, aliquots were sent to other partners involved in this project. Uh, one uh, was, was in charge of analyzing some satiety gastrointestinal hormones that uh, our cells produce. Themself uh, uh, studied the intestinal parameters, focusing on the me metabolism of bacteria that we have in the in a small, uh, mainly in the colon. And also at the University of Murcia, we measured the solubility, uh, stability, and bioavailability of these ingredients. Well, here you can see a twin shine. Twin is because you run two uh, gastrointestinal digestion in parallel to have the same condition. So you can compare a control with a treatment experiment. And basically, it consists in simulate every compartment of the human body of the gastrointestinal digestion. Uh, a stomach condition, a small intestine condition, and the three colon compartment. Ascending, transversal, and descending colon with different bacterial population, pH, uh, condition, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Here you have a, a schematic representation of the, of the shine, and as I said before, this group is ProDigest in Belgium, uh, uh, analyzed the, the production of short-chain fatty acid, uh, ammonium and lactate, and, and also the, they study the evolution of important um, group of bacteria like uh, total bacteria, lactobacilli, and bifidobacteria. According to the result obtained, uh, they prepare a ranking about the beneficial effect of some of these compounds and they, they, with the previous literature, and they saw that the, uh, the production of short-chain fatty acid, uh, more butyrate and, and propionate than acetate, or high amount of acetate is considered as a positive effect because uh, this short chain fatty acid induces satiety. Low levels of ammonium production is also considered a positive effect. The gas production is low to moderate, and the increasing of these two populations, the bacteria population, lactobacilli and bifidobacteria, is also considered as a positive effect due to the bifidogenic effect or the producing of some compounds who has been reported to, to, to increase satiety. The part uh, developed at the University of Murcia uh, consists in a static uh, digestion model, which again, uh, it consists to simulate the, our uh, different gastrointestinal compartment with a, a stomach and a small intestine, but the, the, the peculiar of this uh, digestion is to include this uh, dialysis fraction, which is an approximation of the, that, uh, that we absorb in the intestine. We include a dialysis bag, and outside we have the, the, the lumen of the intestine with the soluble fraction from the, in, the, the intestinal digestion. So after the incubation, we take this dialysis back and measure what is inside. So it's similar to what cells absorb. 
but it's an uh, in vitro approximation, so what we have developed is a, a bioavailability bio test using uh, cell lines, okay, uh, uh, using CACO2 cell lines. So at the end, we put in, in contact this uh, soluble fraction in we, we call apical chamber, and after some incubation, we collect this apical chamber supernatant or basolateral and measure which is in in, in every compartment. So uh, with uh, mass spectrometry that this morning has been uh, developed uh, in, in a better way than I'm going to do that, uh, we can uh, measure the, the relative compound of along this gastrointestinal digestion in, in every step in this static digestion and also in the sign. Again, the positive effect of this are a high stability of uh, means high a positive effect who can induce uh, satiety along the gastrointestinal tract. And all, but in the case of the colon, we consider that uh, the bacteria fermentation is positive, that they produce short-chain fatty acid and so on, which is uh, related with satiety effect. The last part is uh, uh, the other partner, AXAM, is a small and medium enterprise from uh, Italy, and they were in charge of analyzing some uh, satiety hormones like CCK or GLP-1, and also the activation of zinc chemo, chemo receptor. They have developed uh, some mm, me methodology that uh, uh, they can measure uh, the, the, the GLP-1 production or CCK-1 production, CCK production, using a recombinant cell lines with uh, different receptors who uh, uh, emit a uh, fluorescence intensity or luminescence uh, in, a, in, a, in a relation with higher, higher uh, amount of these hormones, higher intensity of signal. Again, the, 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 the ranking of positive uh, effect is higher secretion and um, chemosensor receptor activation, better. In this case, one of the fiber study, which is arabiloxylan, showed a positive effect in that uh, in that parameter. Uh, in the, the project, we have uh, analyzed much more than these three undigestible fibers, and some of them has been uh, selected for clinical trials in, that are running nowadays in other groups from the project. And also, uh, here you can find some conclusion that uh, uh, we we have developed a. a an in vitro platform uh, who can measure satiety along stomach, small intestine with hormones, and also in the colon with ba bacteria uh, metabolism. And also it has been uh, implemented with some uh, most steps or dialysis uh, dynamic. Uh, also the static digestion has implemented with a most step. Uh, the cell base uh, has been established to, to measure the solubility, stability, and the most important one is bioavailability. And also uh, the system, the, the, the cell-based platform to measure some uh, hormones uh, related with uh, satiety. And finally, I would like to, to acknowledge or to, to, to thank you to the, university, to the European Union for funding this uh, very interesting project, and specifically those partners who has involved in this uh, work, work uh, the, the in vitro platform. Mainly uh, Massimo Martoradis from ProDigest, uh, it's a partner of Sampo Semiers, Carmen Frontela and Gaspar Ross from the University of Murcia and my supervisors, uh, Hans Van Sack from the Netherlands from Biactor Enterprise, Jason Halford and Joan Harrod, who are the coordinator of the, of the project from the University of Liverpool, and also the, the part of the, the, the cell uh, in, in Italy are. Uh, from Lee Scarabotor. And of course, thank you to you for your attention. I'm very glad to, if you have some questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, and the floor is open for questions. Everything is clear. <laughs> okay, uh, then I'll ask one. Um, have you compared, uh, like you, it's known that sev certain polysaccharides, uh, let's say, are charged, some are neutral, or if you take a, a gel 
which maybe swells in the stomach, uh, you know, maybe uh, could cause a satiation effect yeah. earlier. Have you looked at this kind of uh, effect of gel swelling uh, and how that affects? Can you measure this effect in your system? Yeah, yeah, we have measured uh, a lot of natural extracts, also some hydrocolytes who form a gel in, in soluble in fraction and so on. So increase the the, the jellific or the, the viscosity in the stomach, so mm, you feel full because there is uh, empty. But yeah, we have uh, tried a lot of uh, ingredients, polysaccharide, fi and digestible fibers, natural extracts, uh, this hydrocolite, so we, we have mm, selected a lot of um, the best uh, ingredients or prototype because we also take into account the food matrix because not uh, every ingredient works at the same level in different matrices. So we have selected, uh, we have studied pure ingredients and with different matrices and until now it's what I, I can show because there is some enterprise in the project so until now we don't have name and from the, the food matrices and the compounds included in this, this food. Sorry for that. Any more questions? If not, let's thank our question, please. Yeah, uh, the, the, the main goal of the project is that the, the, the product that we develop and now we want to demonstrate the healthy benefits because they, the people eat less and don't regain get weight after losing it. Uh, the goal is to, 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 to have some patents in that, uh, the industry, and uh, launch this product in the, in the market. So because nowadays there is only two or three, or a few prototypes, so we want to improve the, the availability and the variety of this product. So we hope that in two or three years later, there will be in the supermarket. Yeah, <laughs> we think so. Okay, thank you very much again, and this is for you. Okay. Oh.